When a woman sets a limit on a man in a relationship, it's a boundary. But when a man sets a limit for her, it's an insecurity. Speaking up in a relationship when something has happened to make you feel some sort of negative emotion is important. But what a lot of people do, especially women try to do, is they set these boundaries for their partner but they aren't willing to accept their partner's boundaries. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking about more double standards. Yes, we've made this into a series. This is episode three on double standards. It will be on the playlist. There are just so many double standards, not only in society, but in relationships and definitely when dating. There is a reason why this is so relatable to so many of you guys. And it's not only because you experience these double standards. I think that you as men, you really get irritated by double standards, especially in a relationship. You feel like you go above and beyond and you give things to the other person. A lot of you guys, the way that you function, like you kind of, you let things go. You know, like if your woman does something like, you know, you're more likely if you really like her, you love her, you're willing to just let them off the hook. You're not pointing it out. You don't want to start a fight. And maybe it's just not that big of a deal. You know, it's not worth it. But when you do literally the same thing and it's thrown in your face, but she's able to do the same thing without it being thrown in her face, that is frustrating, right? Because it's not that you want to throw that in her face as equally as she's throwing it in your face. It's more that you just want it to be fair. You really just don't want her to throw it in your face. You just want her to consider it just like you considered it, right? Like it's not worth it. Let's let him off the hook on this one little thing because it's not a big deal. You know, oh, as the woman, I recognize I've done this same thing before and I wasn't called out for it. You know, maybe we can still have a discussion over it, but I'm not going to label him. There's not going to be a lot of this like negativity, like he's done wrong. He's a bad person kind of language. With that being said, as always, guys, comment if you agree or disagree with anything and let me know if you want more of these. Starting with the thumbnail. Number one, when a woman takes a nap, it's self-care. But when a man takes a nap, he's lazy. I have seen so many women talk about how mad they get when they see their husband napping. It's actually a hot topic I've talked about a lot, especially through reacting to videos of wives that like will suddenly wake up their husbands and get after them because he fell asleep. This guys has everything to do with her wanting to control him and what he does because she probably has some amount of built up resentment. Like she thinks that she should have a say in whether or not you're napping instead of doing something else. The big mistake that women like this are making is that they think the man owes her and that he'll never leave. And maybe that's true to a degree, right? Because usually it's not men that leave. It usually is the woman that will leave. But when she decides to leave and she presents the words breakup or divorce, a man that has experienced this in his relationship, like he is way less likely to fight for it. He will let her make the call to end things and then he'll just work really hard towards a mutual peaceful breakup. Double standard number two, if he drinks a lot, he's an alcoholic. But if she drinks a lot, she's just a party girl. Drinking a lot is not good for either party. But can we recognize that it's usually men that get called out and labeled, which I guess in some ways it's better for men because maybe it pushes you guys more so to get the help that you need. Um, but it's just an interesting double standard because women are more likely to be coddled. People will say, oh, she's just a party girl or oh, she just likes to have fun. The next one. This is one that I saw on a show called Love is Blind. A lot of you guys probably do not watch the show. <laughs> For me, it's just enough of a dose of like junk TV. And it does give me some content ideas. With that being said, number three, a woman that's vegan or vegetarian is viewed as, wow, she's healthy. But a man that's vegan or vegetarian is viewed as not man enough to eat meat. This is in reference to season two, Love is Blind, where one of the women said on camera 
that if you're a man, you have to eat steak. This man that she said it to, he hadn't eaten meat in years, but he ended up eating steak that night. I think we all know that if genders were reversed, a man pressuring a vegan woman to eat meat would not go over well. Number four, when a woman sets a limit on a man in a relationship, it's a boundary. But when a man sets a limit for her, it's an insecurity. Speaking up in a relationship when something has happened to make you feel some sort of negative emotion is important. But what a lot of people do, especially women try to do, is they set these boundaries for their partner, but they aren't willing to accept their partner's boundaries. For example, it could be as simple as her setting up plans to go to the bar with her friends without including him. And when he takes up issue with it, she claims he's insecure and shouldn't have a problem with it. Although, in the meantime, she would never be okay with him setting up plans with his friends to go out to the bar without inviting her. That's an obvious double standard. Number five, if a girl is single, she has standards, but if a man is single, something's wrong with him. This is why, unfortunately, men that are taken actually get more attention than when they are single. Because somewhere deep, in a woman's brain, like in the monkey portion of the brain, she is attracted to men that have already been deemed dateable by other women. To me, this is just kind of messed up and a lot of women, you know, they don't fall into this trap, but they have to be mature enough. And if they aren't and they're just kind of functioning on their feelings, those are the types of women that can fall into this trap. And I think that men have experienced this. Let me know, guys, in the comments. Like, if you feel like you've gotten women's attention more so when you're actually with another woman compared to when you're single, let me know. Number six, so when a man sees a woman naked by accident, he's a peeping Tom. If a woman sees a man naked by accident, he's a flasher. I don't know how much deeper we can dive into that one. So let's just go to the next. <laughs> Number seven. If she cheats, he wasn't giving her attention that she needed. But if he cheats, he's a pig. This is one that I've talked about a lot because in my opinion, there is literally no reason to ever cheat, at least not in today's world in America and most other first world countries. There are just so many other options before cheating with the last one being to just break up and end things before moving on to that next person. But oddly enough, women will try to justify their bad behavior by claiming that her man didn't meet her needs or that she was just unhappy or she was stuck. You know, like she couldn't just break up with him because she was stuck. I mean, you listen to some of these stories on social media and she'll almost have you believing that she had no other choice but it's really just a lack of accountability. Number eight, if she calls him out, she's making him accountable. If he calls her out, he's gaslighting. Number nine, her money is her money, but his money is their money. This is one that I hear from women and some men. Now, of course, if he's earning more of an income because maybe he's the main worker in the family and maybe she's part-time, their percentage of contribution financially should probably be different. But hear me out, for relationships where it is the woman that's the main breadwinner, you don't even hear her saying that her money is their money and his money is his. That's not talked about. And I don't think that's happening in these other relationships where she's the primary breadwinner. Lastly, guys, number 10, when he breaks up with her, he's the villain. And when she breaks up with him, it's his fault. I see this all the time. The man is vilified, especially on social media, especially to her friends group, even in real life, even to her work group, her coworkers. It, he is vilified for her ending the relationship because of whatever behaviors or actions. And it's very one-sided. Men will usually typically acknowledge both sides to the story. And he won't be talking about just the one side to his group of people. He's not doing that. He's not bad-mouthing her. He's just kind of dealing really with the bad-mouthing that he's getting from her end of things that he's hearing. And he's just staying quiet most times and just dealing with it. He's dealing with the heartbreak. He's probably coping to some degree. I'm not saying that everyone has like the healthiest techniques when they're post breakup, 
But in general, I don't see men doing this where they vilify the woman. Most oftentimes, I see that men really just try to, uh, they try to be friendly and they try to co-parent. If there's kids, they try to co-parent in a very healthy way. They try to have it be mutual. That is it, guys. That 10th one makes for a total of 30 double standards that I've spoken about so far on my YouTube channel. If you guys want the next 10, I got them. I got them lined up. Let me know. <laughs> I'll see you next week.